Welcome to our very first FlexJobs team interview. I'm Kelly, I'm the social media specialist at FlexJobs. And today we're talking to Jess. She's the Senior Director of Employer and Client Services at FlexJobs. And today's episode, we're basically gonna talk all about the client services team at FlexJobs. So, hey, Jess, welcome. I'm excited to really talk about it all and get into it with you today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, anytime. So can you first off, explain what does the client services team at FlexJob do? Sure. So we are uh, the primary point of contact for all clients that come to FlexJob. So be it employers that are coming that are interested in listing their jobs on the site or job seekers who are wanting to know how to search or have questions about their account. So um, we are the primary voice of customers. So any feedback, things like that is all gonna come through the client services department and we process that information and get it where it needs to go. Awesome, okay. So then if you could say, what's the most common question that you get asked at what, like, or any of the team, like if they all compiled a list of questions, what it would probably be the most popular question? Sure. A lot of the questions we get are related to the types of jobs that we have on the site. Um, a lot of people come to flex jobs assuming they can only work within a certain amount of industries, things like virtual admin or data entry. Um, so we'll talk to professionals who are either kind of new to looking for remote work or maybe are changing careers and they're not certain what types of roles are out there. So we do a lot of information about the types of unique jobs that are available and the different industries that people don't necessarily think that their skills would transfer to that might end up being a really good fit for them um, as they're working into a remote you know, type of environment. So um, that's a big one is really just letting people know that there's, everyone's not doing data entry or customer service or writing. There are tons and tons of other jobs. That's so true because I get a lot of these questions too on social media and um, I have to answer a lot of them. A lot of the times I'm like, hey, Jess, like, what do you think about this? Like, what, how do I respond to this? I think that one of the biggest ones that I get that I wanted to share with you is a lot of people asking about international jobs and what flex mm -hmm. jobs, how, how flex jobs works with people that are outside of the U.S. Absolutely. And we do hear a lot from either expats or people who are working internationally. Um, it's hard because remote work in a lot of ways kind of has that conception that it is available anywhere at all times and that um, kind of those borders disappear when you're doing remote work. And unfortunately, that's not what we see. Mm -hmm. Most employers are looking for people within specific areas or um, within specific tax regions. There can be a lot of different reasons, time zones, certifications, all sorts of different specifications that an employer can have that can limit that remote work availability. So we definitely do see positions that are available anywhere. So we do have roles for people who are around the world, um, but it is a little bit harder to say, you know, if a, if a US employer, for example, would accept someone outside of the US if they have not listed that they would. So um, that is a very common question we hear as well, just from people who really, really wanna work or want to leave um, their specific area, so. That's true. That's a, have that's a good things one. been especially crazy for you guys because of the pandemic? Yeah, so we, um, we, we joked last year that when everyone else was home organizing their closets, we were insanely busy. So yeah, um, yeah, we did see a lot of people, I think the pandemic did bring around a lot of people to looking more deeply at their careers, um, be it because they either were suffering because they were getting laid off or there was less availability in their career, or they discovered that they really didn't want to work in the office any longer and they like remote work. And so they are looking to kind of make that transition. So it has definitely been a busy year for us just kind of working through what remote work is going to be, um, you know, through the pandemic, after the pandemic and, and in the future. Definitely. Well, how can everyone contact the client services team? What are the different ways that they can get in touch with you? Sure. So we've got three different primary channels that we use for communication. Uh, we, of course, accept email. So people can email us at feedback at flexjobs.com. We also have live chat support. Uh, we have that Monday through Friday from 9 to 6 Mountain Standard Time. And you can talk with anyone on my team live through the virtual chat boxes. 
And we also have phone service for those hours as well. So if it's a situation where you're more comfortable, either on text or via voice, we can handle any of that and make sure and get you go, going where you need to go. I really like the chat option. It's really nice because I get a lot of messages on Facebook. And then a lot of the times I'm like, well, I can't necessarily answer this for you. I can send you over to the chat over at flexjobs.com and you can contact uh, the client services team there. So that's been really helpful. Um, chat is nice for people because we can send links as well as video, which can be really helpful for support. So I think some people shy away from chat because they feel like it will be more impersonal and it actually can be really helpful. So it is a great channel to use. Oh, definitely. Okay, so what's one piece of advice that you would give someone who's in customer service or in the client services field? I think the most important thing, especially if you're looking to do remote customer service is having a dedicated workspace where it is quiet. Mm -hmm. um, employers really don't want their, uh, you know, anyone who's working with their company to know that their staff is at home. So it is something that for my team, we really do value. You have to have an area that's quiet. You have to be uninterrupted. Um, obviously, sometimes doorbells ring or, yeah. you know, dogs bark. But yep. <laughs> overall, you really do want to have that dedicated space. And you need to be able to work independently because a lot of client services is problem solving. And since you're not in an area where you can necessarily, you know, wave someone down and say, hey, I have a really quick question. Um, even though we use Slack for, for that purpose to some extent, yeah. it is helpful for people to be able to work, you know, independently and problem solve so that they're, they're efficient and um, comfortable at home. Totally. That's really good advice. I like that. I mean, I know that I have to try and keep it quiet around here most of the days because I've got toddler running around, a dog, my husband mm -hmm. even. Uh, so it can get it can get a little crazy. But yes, a quiet workspace is definitely important, important for any remote worker, too. Um, well, yeah, thank absolutely. you so much for joining me today. Um, to our listeners, be sure to subscribe to our podcast on your listening platform and on YouTube because we'll be sharing a lot more of exciting Flex Jobs news and interviews there too. And thanks for joining me, Jess. I appreciate absolutely. it.